Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and today I'm going to be showing you how to finish raw edges with single fold bias tape. So I have two new patterns that have come out recently, and both of these have edges that are finished with single fold bias tape. So this one here, this is the Hathaway Tank, and as you can see, the neckline edges here are finished with that single fold bias tape. The armholes as well are finished with single fold bias tape. And then here I have the garnet shorts and this raw edge on the edge of the shorts is finished with single fold bias tape as well. But this time I pressed the bias tape to the outside of the shorts so it adds this nice decorative detail. The technique is the same on both patterns though. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I have some single fold bias tape here that I made and I'm not going to be showing you how to make bias tape today because I have a whole other video that is linked below about how to make bias tape. In order to make single fold bias tape you stop at the point that the two raw edges are touching in the middle and pressed into place. For double fold bias tape you would continue and you would fold it in half again like this. So for the single fold bias tape, I typically cut an inch wide strip and then they are pressed each side a quarter inch in. So I end up with a half inch full width of the single fold bias tape here. That is also the same width that you will generally find in the stores. And then I have a scrap fabric here. This is um, a piece of denim and I've mirrored that curve that you see on the garnet shorts back there so I'm going to show you how to work around a curve because that can be the trickier part when you're working with bias tape. So I have a wool pressing mat here on my table and this is the key to getting your bias tape to work well around a curve. You're going to want to press it with a hot steam iron into the shape of that curve. So. If I want the bias tape finish on the outside, like I did on the short sample here, I actually need to start sewing on the wrong side. So I would flip this over. And then I want to press this in the same manner that I would be stitching it. So it's going to end up getting stitched with these raw edges up, so I'm going to press it that way as well. I'm going to position it a quarter inch away from the edge so that I can open the bias tape and I'll be stitching in this crease line. So I'll position it that far away from the edge and then just with hot iron set with plenty of steam, I'm going to press it and I'm going to curve as I'm pressing and take it around that curve and I'm keeping it a quarter inch away from the raw edge. And I don't want this wrinkle here, so I'm going to press again. And you can kind of press down with the iron and stretch very slightly to get your bias tape to conform to that curve. There we go. You can see I've pressed most of that wrinkle out. So what I would do then, trim the bias tape, I'm going to put the iron away, and then I can pin this bias tape into place. And you'll notice that I start pinning on either end of the curve because I'm trying to maintain that curve that I pressed in. Now because fabric stretches slightly on the bias grain, you actually will feel your bias tape and you will need it to stretch very slightly as you're pinning this curve into place. Now that I have this pinned into place, I'm going to take it over to my machine to stitch. And I'm positioning the needle so it will sew in that crease mark that is closest to the raw edge. Uh. 
Now that I have that stitched, what I need to do is flip the bias tape to the right side in this case, because I'm using it as trim, and I'm going to use my iron to press it again right along that edge that I stitched. Now that this is pressed, I can go ahead and add a few pins to hold this in place if needed. If your fabric's just holding your pressing line, you don't need to add the pins. And then I'm going to take this over to the machine and I want to sew right as close to that folded edge as I can. So what I like to do is I like to reposition my needle to get it over to that folded edge and to keep a good amount of fabric touching the feed dogs and the presser foot on my machine. There we go, I have the biased finished edge. Now, if I had started by sewing on the right side, I could have flipped that to the wrong side and I would have the bias tape on the inside. That's what I did on my tank top. This is how I did the shorts. Either way, it makes a beautiful finish. If you'd like to see more seam finishes, I've got a playlist here and you can click on that to check out more.